Beat boots or attack boots? Attack. And Vibiter Lune has officially released, and he is doing a lot of damage, as you guys can honestly see. He's become one of my favorite characters, and honestly, I was a little worried and skeptical about rolling on him because of his skill point management, him needing to use three skill points in order to use his attack, but I think it's perfectly fine, and I'll explain why later throughout this video. First off, I do want to apologize for the late upload on this guide video. As you guys might already be able to tell, I am currently sick and I have been sick the past couple of days. So unfortunately, I have not been able to push out a guide sooner than I have wanted to. Hopefully in the future, I believe there is a media server for future characters and new characters. I'll be able to get on this media server and get early access to characters to record videos ahead of time before the update comes out. So stay tuned for that. With all that being said, if you do want quicker and more up-to-date information, join us over on Twitch. We, we literally run through the character on day one and explain everything about the character on day one. And then we try and record for YouTube, which comes out like a couple days after. So if you do want early access to this, join us over on Twitch. We're live most days. All right, so let's quickly talk light cones for Don Hung. Obviously, his signature light cone is going to be best in slot on him. It is a stat stick beyond belief. You're getting crit off the bat, 18% of it, which is nice, which will help with Root and Lin Arena, his best in slot, uh, two-piece set. Whenever the wearer uses their basic attack, which you will always be doing, you're gaining one stack of Dragon's Call, which lasts two turns. And every stack will increase your attack by 18% and energy by six, up to two stacks. So 36 attack percent, 12 energy, and 18 crit. Absolutely busted. Really good on him. However, don't feel FOMO'd and pressured into actually rolling for that light cone because there is, believe it or not, a very free-to-play option that's insane, all right? So there's On the Fall of an Eon. You can buy from the Herda shop for just your Herda bonds. I think eight Herda bonds. And you're able to, whenever you attack, you're increasing your attack by 8% up to four times. 32% off the bat and then 64% uh, at fully refined, which keep in mind, you're able to fully refine this 2S5 completely free and very quickly as well. I think if you're a new player and you're playing Honkai Star Rail, you can get this max refined, I believe, don't quote me in this, in like two weeks time because of how many herd of bonds you end up getting based off of like your new clears on Sim Universe. You can pretty much get these maxed out in like two weeks time, I believe. And then it also says whenever the wear and inflicts Weakness break on enemies. The wearer's damage increases by 12% for two turns, which his break is also very, very good. So on the fall of an Eon, that is what I'm currently rocking. And those are the damage numbers that you currently see on the screen uh, for my Don Hung. Highly recommend that if you are not going for the signature light cone. Again, don't feel FOMO'd into that because that is still a phenomenal option. If for some odd reason you don't have enough Herda Bonds to actually buy that on the fall of an Eon because you bought the other Herda Shop Light Cones and you are waiting those four to eight weeks to try and buy it, I would probably recommend Secret Vow here for just the raw damage increase, 20%. And if you can max it out to S5, 40% extra damage increase off the rip. An extra 40% as well if they're equal to or higher than your current HP percentage. Under the blue sky, another four-star option. Increase the wearer's attack by 32%. And whenever you defeat an enemy... The wearer's crit rate increases by 24% for three turns. This is S5, and there is a condition on the second half here. So you have to make sure you are defeating enemies. It will only last for three turns. So if you're going up against Memory of Chaos, against bosses, and those are taking more than three turns, you are going to fall off on that. So if you are trying to build your Dawn Hung, try and work towards this. You're giving away 24% of his own crit to try and benefit from this. It might come back to bite you in the butt later on if that fight is taking longer than three turns. So keep that in mind. Those are my options. Don Hung, very simple character to build in terms of light cones. Very friendly. Uh, yeah. All right. So just to quickly take a look at my traces here. Most of his traces, you're going to want. By most, I mean pretty much you're going to want to get all of his traces pretty much maxed out because all of his traces do benefit him. He is not unlike other DPS characters here or like a specific DPS character, I would say, where like for Jing Yuan, 
I have his other stuff maxed out, but I don't have his auto attack because, you know, I really just want to keep eating with him to build up stacks on Lightning Lord. Don Hong wants pretty much everything maxed out, except for that HP trace. I'm not going to go for that. I'm not going to worry about that. So starting with basic attack, basic attack is going to be your bread and butter here. Obviously, that's kind of what you're going to be doing with uh, Don Hong, preferably the E2 or the E3. So the second enhanced or the third enhanced is what you're going to want to go with. A lot of people are 50-50 about whether to go for the talent or the ultimate. So I'd say either level up one of these two accordingly ultimate and your talent is after every single hit don hung gains one stack of righteous heart increasing his damage by 9.3 or a certain percentage up to six times so once it's fully maxed out you're getting 60 percent more damage which does last until the end of his turn so you do have to keep in mind if you want to benefit the most of that you have to combo with something else either you're using your basic attack and then you use your ultimate or you use your ultimate and then you use your basic attack that's the only way you're going to be able to actually benefit from this because it lasts until the end of his turn. Do keep that in mind. And the same thing goes for a skill as well. I know it's a lot of text to read, but this is pretty much a TLDR of when you're using Divine Spear, which is your second enhance, or your Fulgurant Leap, which is your third enhance, two skill points, three skill points. From the fourth hit, one stack of Outroar is going to be gained before every hit each stack of outroar increases don hung and bibber lunate crit by a certain percentage depending on how you have it maxed out for four stacks so i could essentially get 40 percent more crit damage right now and this stack will also last until the end of his turn again keep that in mind you're only able to benefit from these buffs during his turn when you actually do this so if you're using your second enhance or your third enhance you have to make sure you're comboing into your ultimate immediately after or if you already have your ultimate gained because there's like two ways to play normally when i'm playing don hung i will make sure i triple e always and then it, once i get my ultimate from that triple e get enough energy then i'll ultimate immediately to benefit from the righteous heart the damage increase and the crit damage stacks because they will go away now on the other hand if you do have your ultimate already ready to go and it's not even don hung's turn yet you can still all early on don hung and then while it's cycling to get to his turn he's gonna have those righteous heart stacks he's gonna have the crit damage stacks and then you can triple e you'll have some squama stacks so it'll be less of a cost you'll be able to use your triple e for only i think one cost on your skill and then you'll be able to do a lot more damage personally that's my kind of combo because if you've played don hung he does a lot more uh basic attack damage than alt damage even if they're both maxed out with my testing i've done on uh, someone else's account here at e0 all right let's all see my man dan one two three 67 168 we attack 102,000. i alt immediately after because like i said during the the guide showcasing you get these stacks, right? Righteous Heart. It goes away at the end of his turn. Righteous and Outroar. These two. If I don't alt here, I lose those stacks. So we want to make sure we alt immediately. 67, 207. World cleansing dragon. <laughs> After ultimate in the bottom left, we get the two Squama stacks as well. The two Among Us stacks. All right. All we need is one skill point because the Squama stacks will reduce it, so... Even though we only have two or one skill point here, I can enhance, use up the Squama. Another enhance, use up another Squama. Final enhance. Boom, bang, ready to go. And we fucking blast them. 144,000. Yeah, everything else is really good. Obviously, you want the crit damage here. 24% when dealing damage to enemies with imaginary weakness, which they should be if you're going up against them. Start of the battle, it's a one-time thing, but 15 energy at the very beginning. Why not? It does unlock the crit and the imaginary stat bonuses, those little minor traces out there. And the bonus ability, resist crowd control debuff, 35%. Really good. I'm going to be honest, I feel like uh, Jing Yuan should have had something like this, you know, but <clears throat> it is what it is. His traces are pretty good, and you're going to want to get them anyways. And the damage we're doing can only excel quite a bit the more we level up and max these out. All right, let's hop into relics here for Don Hung. So currently, I am running a Wastelander of Banditry Desert. So this is the four-piece imaginary set. And with that four-piece imaginary set, you are getting imaginary damage 10%, as well as when attacking debuffed enemies, the crit rate increases by 10% as well. 
it does also say you can increase your crit damage by 20 percent against imprisoned enemies so if you are constantly doing that it's an added bonus i'm not really worried about that i'm more so worried about the two piece here and the first half of the four piece personally i always try and combo don hung with pella or sw so the enemy will be debuffed and that's just more crit for me so it's very easy to build crit and because of that you're able to run a crit damage chest piece on don hung and amplify his damage even more so so with the four piece banditry getting that 10% extra crit on top of his crit traces, which I believe give like 12%. I am able to actually rock him. We are currently at a 67.7, which goes up to a 77.7. Not the highest, I'll be honest, but still pretty decent for the 148 crit damage here. And then after that, this is the rope, the set that I'm currently running. We're running a Nerd Sal Sado. Now, I always like to say, don't try and force something if the substats are awful as you guys can see my rootland arenas have not rolled anything imaginary we got ice we got ice we got wind we got lightning we got quantum we got fire we got everything best in slot in terms of two piece would be rootland arena you're increasing your crit by eight percent and whenever you are able to get that 70 percent crit you are gonna be increasing your basic attack damage by 20 percent very big yeah because most of it all of his damage comes from his basic attack of course don't try to run like pretend this was imaginary you wouldn't want to run an imaginary piece that has defense hp and defense and be like all right benefiting from the two piece at least let's go baby at the bare minimum try and just work with what you got all right so second best would probably be like space ceiling station maybe the reason why i haven't upgraded this one though is because again it's hp effect resin break effect I, I i don't want to run that on my don hung so i'm going with the third best here which is inert salsado it looks pretty good too 17 5.8 really great and i'm still getting the eight percent crit increase anyways and i'm still getting ultimate damage increase so at least i'm benefiting from two things i'm benefiting from good substats my main stat here crit and ultimate 15 percent uh and that's that's pretty much it so we're going hp attack crit damage or crit if you desperately need more crit but i feel like try and work that on the substats and the four piece here if you're running that with the uh, Rootland Arena. And believe it or not here, this is gonna surprise a lot of people. Attack percent boots feel so much better than speed boots. So I had originally farmed for speed boots, right? And I, I would argue and say these speed boots are actually better than the actual attack boots because they rolled nothing but break effect here and not my crit. Attack percent boots are actually feeling a lot better throughout the testing I've done. And the main reason why is because you're able to actually generate more skill points back for Don Hung. So he's able to do that three basic attack hit you never want to have a don hung not enhance his his basic attack at the bare minimum you want to always go two basic enhances but three is very good you just want to make sure don hung has skill points and skill point positive supports to run with him to generate more skill points back so you're able to three enhance every single time it's his turn now with that being said different characters and team comps we could talk about would be like locha locha is obviously a number one pick here he's imaginary all he has to do is basic attack and that's pretty much it he's just nothing but a net positive skill point generator for your team so always run him if you can plus he's imaginary so if you want to run like sw you can try and build like a mono imaginary team if anything uh sw is a very good character to run like i said for the four piece imaginary set use your e on sw and then just auto attack auto attack auto attack generate more skill points Ting Yun is the same in that sense. All you have to do on Ting Yun, use your E, buff Don Hung, auto attack, auto attack, auto attack. You're generating skill points. I would argue and also say if you don't have Locha, you can run Bailu. And hopefully her invigoration will sustain your team enough that you don't have to constantly E with her and you can just oh, auto attack with Bailu. Other characters would be Pella. Pella, you can basically just auto attack and she'll be able to generate a bunch of skill or a bunch of energy back thanks to her trace that she has which is uh the energy here so i like to combo her with sweat here pearls of sweat and this i'd also probably say yukong as well so the main reason why yukong scared a lot of people and probably why don hung scared a lot of people is their skill point management right a lot of people use yukong as like you got to constantly keep eing 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 and she's just sucking up so many skill points right she's she's like i see chat right now saying no skill points question mark no skill points now the way that i play her is i will e on yukong and then i will basic attack on yukong and then alternate between those so at the bare minimum she's a skill point neutral 
right? She's not really using any skill points because she's losing one and then she's generating one. She's keeping you stagnant. However, I feel like once you get E6, then you're like skill point positive because whenever Yukong uses your ultimate, she immediately gains that one stack of Roaring Bowstring. Yukong is on the Dawn Hung banner, so you might be able to get lucky and actually get that. Uh, but do keep in mind, there is going to be a lot of speed tuning with Yukong. She could be a headache in that department because you want to make sure that Don Hung is going after Yukong for her buffs. But the benefits she can provide probably be worth the headache that you're going to go through and the hoops you have to jump through in order to make her work on that Don Hung team. You can run Planetary Rendezvous on her team, increase the wearer's damage. She has the Bowmaster ability. Imagine your damage dealt by all allies increases by 12%. And she's also giving you a buttload of crit, crit damage and attack all right let's quickly talk about eidolons out there for the whales but i'm gonna be honest if there are whales trying to go for eidolons they're probably not watching guide videos anyways they're just rolling for the eidolons again e6 and doing a buttload of damage already as it is but for the people out there who are like you know what maybe maybe i do want some eidolons here we got e1 increase the stackable righteous heart count by four so that's going from six to four and you get one extra stack for every hit during an attack which means it's easier to build up those stacks and you're able to go up to 100% more damage increase. E2 here is after you're using his ultimate, and Bibiter Lunay's action is advanced forward by 100%. Extremely good. And you're getting one extra Squama, which means you're going from two stacks to three stacks, and that's essentially meaning you get a free E3 power enhance for your basic attack. We have E4, the buff effect granted by Outroar lasts until the end of the character's next turn. So that's good. Outroar is the crit damage, if I'm not mistaken, on the skill. And like I said, you always have to make sure you use these stacks before his turn ends, which is why I always try and say, use your E and then immediately use your alt or use your alt and then immediately use your E or else you're losing those stacks of crit and you're losing like 40% crit damage. And then E6, after any other ally use their ultimate, the imaginary res penetration of Imbibitor Lunae's next Fulgrant Leap, his third enhanced basic attack increases by 20 percent and it can stack up to three times 60 percent imaginary res pen sheesh all right and that pretty much concludes my don hung guide i do apologize for the late guide and the sick guide I wanted to get this out to you guys because I am going to be going out for a couple of days. So hopefully we do have a couple of videos to roll on the video throughout my days off. I Everyone in the Twitch chat is saying 07, goodbye funeral stream because I am coughing up a storm and it sounds like I am dying. So apologies again for the sick guide video here. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.